I didn't know that you can go to a bank without a check. That they can give you money without a check. I didn't know. So the man just gave me his business card and he signed at the back of it. And he said, go to the bank. He said, this is Lagos. I don't want you to carry money from here, cash. I want you to go to the bank, the branch in Nevada. Go there. I said, where's the check? He said, I don't have any check for you. Just go there and give them this card. I thought the guy was deceiving me. <laughs> believe me, I didn't believe it. So I said, when I got there, I said, no, don't let me go this night. Let me go the next morning. <laughs> so I went there. They say, who are you looking for? I said, I don't look for anything. I only have, I want to see the manager and I have this card. They look at that card. Everybody started doing like this. Mm -hmm. They were, I'm telling you, they opened the door for me straight away. And I looked, and I just went, and I presented that business card. They said, excuse me, sir, this is a seat for you here. Can you sit down here? When they came out, they gave me some bills of money, fresh one. I, I, first of all, look, I said, am I dreaming? <laughs> Cash! They gave me. The man said, go and use it to repair that thing you want to renovate. <laughs> I was shocked. I was shocked. That was not the end of it. The man was instrumental in my being here today. Being here today, he was instrumental. I know when he finished, I've been trying to get in touch with him. The man disappeared. <laughs> I've been trying to get No! And God bless him. God bless, I mean, God bless his family. God bless him. God touch him. Listen to me. You need to listen to Revelation. Revelation. Say Revelation. Revelation. Lord, let me receive Revelation from you. Because when you receive Revelation, it makes your life what? Easier. It makes things better for you. You, you, you must receive revelation from God. Don't despise revelation. If you despise revelation, you can't go too far. You won't be able to move forward. So that's why you need to know and to know God speaking to you. Amos 3.7. Let's read Amos 3.7. Be open to God to speak to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 14.6. Revelation Amos 3.7, please. Is somebody there? I wish somebody can coach it off. Eh? Surely the hand, surely the, the Lord God will do nothing. Yes. He revealed his secret unto his servant, the prophet. Listen to this. God will do nothing. He revealed what? Secret. That's why if you don't position yourself, you cannot receive revelation. You don't spend time with God. You can't receive revelation. You don't spend time to pray. You, can, you don't read the word of God. You can't receive. You need revelation of God. God give you a revelation. Have you not heard in the Bible that Ananias was there and God appeared to him in what? In a vision and showed him a revelation. The same thing happened to Saul. God appeared to him and showed him what? A revelation. You need the revelation of a day to day of what you need to do. Hallelujah. Amen. I think I've shared with you before. I was going to write an exam. And I was reading. And I said, God, please lead me. And I was reading, I think I've shared it, and this Holy Spirit told me when I got to a point, he said, stop. He said, mark this question. And I mark it. And I continue reading. I got to the second one. He said, stop there. Mark this question. And I mark it. And I continue to read. And he asked me, stop. Mark the third one. After the third one, he told me, those three questions will come in the exam you're going to take. Ah. You know human beings being human beings? What do I supposed to do? Concentrate. Concentrate on those three. I read those three, but I read some of the relevant things. <laughs> Instead of spending the whole hour just... And you know, I got to the exam hall. First of all, I was shocked. They did not change those questions. They copied it word for word. He came in there, word for word. Ha <laughs> ha, Holy Ghost. Before I started writing, I, and they asked me to do three questions out of five. Of course, do I need to? <laughs> but I just, I just did all those three. And I finished. I turned in my paper. You know, of course, what is going to be the result. Of 
Because I got A. <coughs> People say that guy is smart. Oh, well. Holy Ghost is smart. <coughs> they thought I did it. I said, no, this is Holy Ghost. If you don't have a revelation, may God help us not to do irrelevant things. Amen. Things we're not supposed to spend energy. You're not spending energy on it. They come help us. You need the revelation of your life. You need the revelation of what God wants you to do. You need revelation. Either God speaks to you through vision or dreams or through his word. Pray until you have a release. I say, God, this is the revelation from God. The next thing we need to do is stop crying. Crying. And you know, the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to the children of Israel to do what? To go forward. They were crying. They saw the enemy coming behind. They were concentrating on the enemy. They didn't concentrate on God who is able to overcome the enemy. They struck him. And God said, why are you crying to me? Because I knew they were there, but do what? You, you continue moving forward. Despite the obstacle that may come along your way, God wants you to move forward. Take positive action. Faith without work is dead. I see kept digging. He just believed that God would take him to his real boat. He believed that. And what did God ask Moses to do? God said, raise up your word, your rod. Verse 16. Verse 16 and, but leave verse 15. Let's start from 15 and 16. And the Lord said to Moses, why you cry to me? Speak to the children of Israel. They go forward. God saw the enemy. Was God concerned about the enemy? No. God said, don't let the enemy hold you down. You move forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel that go on a dry land through the midst of the sea. Listen to this. What is your rod today? Is the authority that God has given to us as individuals and as a church. That's why the devil is fighting the church. He made people never to agree. He knows that once the church agree on anything, <laughs> that thing will happen. And so people come to church, they fight each other. He doesn't want them to believe, he doesn't want them to agree on anything. And God told him, stretch out your hand and do what? And divide it. Did Moses do that? Yes. He stretched out his hand and that Red Sea parted. And the Bible says, the children of Israel went on what? On a dry land. You will go on a dry land. Amen. This year, the Red Sea before you will part in the name of Jesus. Amen. Year 2019, the, ah, the Red Sea of sickness, the Red Sea of affliction, the nature will part in the name of Jesus. Amen. When it comes to your turn, God will grant you favor. Amen. They will remember you, your paper. They will remember you for good. Amen. This year, and not very soon. I mean, very soon, God will open that door. Amen. And God said, the authority that God has given me, God said, Moses, did God come down to come and do it for him? No. Eh? No. <laughs> some of us expect God to come from everyone. There's something God expects you to do. You speak to it and say, way be parted. These people come out. Situation change. You have to use it. And the Bible says, when you say that from now, God will say amen what? Amen. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose what? On earth shall be lose where? Amen. If you don't lose it here, you think heaven will lose it? No. Uh -huh. Lose it here and you see heaven say amen to it. Hallelujah. Amen. It is something that God expects us to do. It's in our faith. Jeroboam was having problems. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, the Bible said there were so many enemies around him. But he fasted for one day, including children, and they cried to God, and he told God, he said, God, even this situation is so hard, I don't even know what to do. You know, there are some situations you don't even know what to do. He went before God and said, God, I don't, this situation, I don't even know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. By what decision, and the Bible says, God, Make the spirit to come on Jazai and start a prophesy. Thus says the Lord. You don't need, and God gave him a clear way. The Bible says, God made their enemy to fight each other. Your enemy will fight themselves this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brethren, this is God speaking to us. And let us give him every support. If you want to move forward, you need my support, I need your support. In Exodus chapter 17, the Bible says, the Amalekite came to fight Israel. And Moses was there, took the word of God, 
and what was determining the rod of God, the success, was not any other thing but the rod. And Joshua was fighting the valley. But the Bible said the hand of Moses was so heavy. When his hand went down, what happened? They lost the battle. But when his hand went up, what happened? They were having the success. What was determining the success was the positioning of the rod of Moses. And the Bible says, Hor, and these other by came, Aaron. They came to support Moses. And the Bible says, the hand of Moses was what? Was steady. And what happened? Victory came. You need to make your hand to be steady in your prayer, in your support, in the things you are doing, so that victory will come. Amen. It's a spiritual thing. Let's give all the support. Expect God to move on your behalf. God will trouble the host of Egypt here that are troubling you. Amen. All those who are troubling you and saying you will not enjoy the blessing of God, God will trouble them. Amen. Exodus chapter 14, verse 29 to 31. Let someone read it for us. Exodus 20, 14, verse 29. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. <coughs> Yes. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Let me tell you one thing. <laughs> All those who troubles you, they will be troubled. Amen. All those who are saying, where are you going to go? They will be troubled. Amen. Because God Vengeance belong to who? To God. That's one of the things God is, is teaching me. I need to walk more with this scripture and to obey this scripture. Even when it doesn't make sense to me. I need to hold on to the word of God. Even when my enemy are fighting me, I don't concentrate on the enemy. I concentrate on what God says. Give him food. Even when your enemy comes, give him food. So that the coal of fire will come on pot. Says the scripture. Brethren, God wants you to go forward. God wants you to progress. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 4 to 5. And we're going to round up with that. Isaiah 40, verses 4 to 5. Isaiah 40, verses 4 to 5. Let somebody read that and look at what God is saying to you. Every shall be exalted. Every word, every valley shall be what? Exhausted. You know what they call a valley? Something that is deep. Are you in the valley deep down and you see and see there's no more way? God will lift you up. Amen. I say God will lift you up. Amen. Be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, God will do it. I don't know, but God will lift you up. Amen. Are you in debt? You can't come out. God will lift you up. Amen. It's affliction and sickness your point. God will lift you up. Amen. Read on, please. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. Every mountain, the thing that says, where are you going to pass? When you get there, God will make it low. Amen. Yes, read on. And the foot shall be made straight. Hmm. And, and, yes. And rock makes his name. Listen to this. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. And all the crooked shall be what? Made straight. You know something is crooked? Something that is not straight. Every crooked area of your life this year will be straight in the name of Jesus. And the rough places shall become what? Smooth. Have you driven on, on rough places before? When you drive on it, you back, 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 back. God say no, no more that. It's going to be smooth. Amen. <laughs> All your shock absorber that is out, God will replace them. Amen. And you go on the smooth land. Because God is at work in Amen. you. God wants to work in you. God wants to do a new thing. God wants to come and say, praise the Lord. This is what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to go forward. Listen. I said, Lord, I want you to start to speak to every area of your life and say, I will go forward. I will go forward. Everybody be lifted up right now. Everybody be exalted. Every month be, and he will be made low. Every cook will be made straight before me this year. Every wrong places I command you to be smoothed in the name of Jesus because the Lord will do it. Ah, hallelujah. Because God is in the business. God wants to do a new thing. Let's start to prophesy unto this assembly. This assembly shall be lifted up in the name of Jesus. We see this place filled with men and women 
In the name of Jesus, I see this place growing. I see people blessed. I see people married. I see people having children. I see God prospering his people. I see people saved. I see the miracle of God. Because God will do it. I am moving forward. Move forward. From the of Benya, Benya, you will move forward. In your life, call your name and say, I'm moving forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Make sure you love the Lord with all of your heart. Let me tell you, God will not disappoint you. Put your heart to Him.